Okay, poi people. Um, like I said in the last video, this is the first installment of the Poi Boy Blue Tech Blog. And that name sounds really egocentric, which I don't too terribly mind. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a grouping grouping of different ways that I've found to get in and out of crossers, being that crossers up until very recently were a extremely low selling point for me. Um, they were probably one of my worst techniques. I could not mix them into performance any way whatsoever at all. Um, and through learning some more slightly advanced, I don't really think they're advanced, I think you could learn them at any level, uh, techniques snaking, body tracing, and such. Um, through learning some of those, I found a way to, a few ways to incorporate crossers a little better. So, the basic thing that you're going to need to know is the weaves. Uh, two beat is fine, three beat is optimum, five beat will get in the way for this. Um, although technically you could probably do it just as well with a 5 beat as, with, as a 3 beat if you're good at that. Um, you start with the weave. Um, I'm most comfortable in the 3 beat weave as most people are. We sort of forget the 2 beat. Um, which there's a huge emphasis on, uh, but I'll get into that later. So you start in the 3 beat here, right? And when your hands are crossed, basically like this, um, hopefully you've drilled this position because this really is going to become useful for you. Um, and with the other hand on top. Because that's the first way that you're going to learn to get into a crosser. Uh, if you know what a crosser is, um, then you may be having trouble with it um, in actual performance because this is a very awkward motion to do. So. I would say that the easiest way is to go into a fountain and then from the fountain jump into the crosser. Um, it's definitely the first way I learned and I was never happy with it because it's, there's always this one beat in there that you have to compensate for. Um, makes it a little hard to throw it together. So what you basically have is you've got the spin. Sorry. You got the spin, and while your arms are crossed, you need to learn to keep them there, right? Drill this going back and forth and keeping your hands, you know, spinning on those planes. And then from there, learn to just go with the momentum, which is exactly what's taught, right? Alternately, and this is uh, something I picked up yesterday just from experimenting. Um, you can get into them through a sort of body tracing snake motion that incorporates the motion of the fountain here, uh, specifically at the top, where your hand crosses and then throws the other poi, like that. Uh, if you can't see that, basically what's going on is from the position of them spinning, you cross your hands around each other. One, two, three, right? Um, and you drop that down. So instead of doing it here, where the windmill is going to be, you do it here, right across your face, with your elbows sort of pointed out. The idea is that, right, you've got a slight body tracer snake motion going on in there. Um, and how that translates into a crosser is basically, say you're in the weave, right, here, and into the crosser. And this jacket's getting in the way, excuse me. Okay, so from there into the crosser. It's much smoother, than I think, than um, jumping into it from the basic weave like this. Um, mind you, I'm still not that great at crossers because I didn't have a good way to get into them. Um, 
hopefully this will help me out with that. But anyway, the motion is the same motion you have for the top of the fountain there, going from the reverse to going from the reverse to the windmill to the forward weave. You can ignore the third step of crossing back on the bottom. And what you do is you take this weave and you do basically this front motion here and cross back to the opposite side instead of throwing it behind your head as well. And it looks like this. There is a slight pass over your shoulder, obviously. Um, but if you do the fountain enough, then uh, that'll become really simple to translate. So you basically have the weave here and the weave here that you're working with, right? And then into the crosser. And like I said, it's smoother, it's cleaner, um, and hopefully it will help you guys. Um, and if it doesn't, and you found another way that helps you uh, get into that a little easier, then, like I said in my last video, tell me. Uh, give me any information you can on those techniques, all right? Hopefully this hasn't been too boring. Um, moving on to the second installment of it fairly soon, probably today, um, in which I'm going to go through what I believe to be a slightly easier version, um, or method, rather, of learning the um, waist wraps. Alright, so look forward to that, and I will see you guys soon.